Now, I'm normally joined here when I do these with uh, another person or a couple of folks to chat about a particular technology around the energy transition. But this week, I'm here on my own and simply to share with you some of the tips and tricks that I've seen popping up as we deal with virtual events. Because let's face it, virtual events are kind of the, the only show in town for the next couple of months, potentially. So what am I planning on doing today? So what I want to do is share with you kind of, I suppose, level set on what I see going on with virtual events these days. And then kind of share some of my tips and tricks around if you're an attendee, if you're a speaker, or if you're a participating company, a, a sponsor uh, of whatever, sponsoring a particular event, or you want to get your, your brand presence out there. Now, what I'm not covering is I'm not going to geek out on all the tech, right? I'm here in my uh, office and I've got all the gadgets and whatever. So I can bore you all to tears some other time with all the hardware behind the scenes and, and, and. I'm also not going to review all the different platforms that are out there. I sh name the ones that I've seen used. But again, it's not a, pl a platform review of what's the best virtual platform. And I don't know the ultimate answer as to how you get the best engagement and sales leads and, and, and out of an event. If I did, I'd tell you, but I don't. But simply what I want to do is share with you what, what I see as kind of the best practices or the tips and tricks. Right. So now to level set, I used to travel to a lot of events, probably too many. And a virtual event is not the same as an in-person event. But they are the only game in town for the foreseeable future. This crisis isn't going away fast. Now, if some vaccine or some other thing changes and it all disappears overnight, oh, brilliant. I live in hope. But virtual events are, are kind of here to stay. And it, they will evolve. But you'll hear me rant a good bit throughout this, the next 30 minutes or so is what I find fascinating and frustrating is people are not treating virtual events as proper events. And I kind of go through some of the examples that I've seen and then some of the good examples that I've seen. And, you know, from a business point of view, the goals of a virtual event are the exact same as an in-person event. You're there to learn stuff, to be visible personally or as a brand. You're trying to expand your network. You're trying to get leads. You might be want to close deals. You might want to meet up with old friends. So to be quite honest, on, on most of the online platforms, you can do all of those things. Now, the thing you can't do is say, I'd love to go back down to Barcelona because there's great food and we can go to a certain bar. That, that's hard to do. But everything else from a, a personal and a lot of the engagement stuff, you can do. But you just you need to put a bit of effort into it. The next one, a level set, event platforms, they all vary. There are multiple ones out there. And an event platform is everything from Zoom, Microsoft Teams, WebEx, GoToWebinar, On24, and, and, and. You then have, I've, I've, I've used or, or been in events or at events that used Hopin, Feedloop, Eventscribe Live, Grip, Room AG. Um, there's a lot of people starting to use other collaboration platforms in addition to doing a live stream. And I'll, I'll show a couple of examples. Some of them are very clever. So things like Slido for asking questions, Miro for kind of virtual whiteboarding and um, post-it notes, uh, swap card, and, 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 and. Now, if you go out and Google any of, you know, virtual event platforms, you will find probably 100. This is only the ones that I've seen or used in, within the energy industry. And they all have varying levels of, um, capability. And a lot of the technologies that you hear people talking about under the covers, they might be using Logitech um, Capture for managing cameras. They might be using broadcast platforms like ManyCam, Ecamm Live, um, StreamYard, Social Live, and, 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 and. They're all kind of parts of like, if you like, the production kind of side of things. And even for those of you that know me, I've been off looking at some of the VR um, environments, and they've um, advanced rapidly over the the past six months. They're still niche, um, but AR, VR, I think we'll see more of that uh, coming down the line. Now, a couple of things to consider when people say to me, oh, we're using this event platform. 
And, you know, marketing is a wonderful thing. And if you read all their blurbs from the different event platforms, they support all this and that and the other. But it varies, right? So a couple of the things I would advise people to watch out for if you're looking for a platform for your own event. And some things are around, you know, well, what's the concept you want for your own event or the event that you're hosting? Is it behind a paywall or is it free? Are you going to, even if it's free, is it going to be behind a kind of a walled garden? I want people to log in or am I just going to stream it live on YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and whatever, right? So again, depending on what you want to try and do, what platform do you want to use? The other thing that a lot of people ask is, well, should we do, you know, just a couple of sessions? Should we have one long day? Should we have multiple days? Should we do two hours over 15 days? Whatever. I, I don't know the answer to that. I personally prefer to get them over in one day where people can treat it like a real event and attend the event and plan for it. But if it's on, you know, multiple days for multiple weeks, um, I find that challenging for people to come back all the time. You then get into the thing of, well, will we have one continuous stream? So we're, we're starting at nine o'clock in the morning and we'll go until two o'clock. So we have one stream on YouTube that works. Or do you want multiple sessions so that the, the chats and the questions happen in little enclosed areas for that session? Uh, you get people to move around. You could have parallel sessions and then that. And again, these are the kind of things to think about when you're planning an event as opposed to, well, does the platform support it? The pl most of the platforms support all of these kind of things. But one of the features you'll find is that you might then say, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have a session and then we'll take the, the keynote speaker off for a kind of a private room Q&A or we'll have breakout rooms and whatever. And again, most of the platforms allow for all this. But you'll hear them say, oh, we integrate with Zoom and we integrate with um, Skype and, 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 and. What you'll find is that some of them integrate in different ways. So, for example, a couple of platforms I've used recently, they integrate with Zoom. So you can have breakout rooms, which you say, that's great. But they don't support Zoom's grid view. They only support active speaker. So you're in a breakout room, and the only thing you see is the person speaking. You don't see the other people. Um, it works. But again, it, it, it devils in the detail, right? But you kind of have to dig into these kind of things to understand, well, what will I, what will it look like? How do you ask questions? Um, is it one big long chat for everybody? A number of the platforms out there allow people to put in a question and then I can upvote a question. So I might say, ah, uh, Tom just asked a good question. I'll, I'll upvote that. So the moderators and the people on the panel can see the ones that get the most votes. So Slido and some of the other tools have it built in as well. So that's quite handy because otherwise, if you're a moderator that I've been in the past, you're kind of scrolling up and down through reams of, of chat messages trying to find the questions. Um, so that whole voting thing is kind of quite, quite handy. And as I say, in terms of chats, again, it's kind of back to the walled garden versus do you want to have chats going off off platform? And what I mean by that is most of the event platforms will have a way where I can see all the attendees, I can see a speaker, I can send you a private chat and we can have a chat there. But do you also put in the, the LinkedIn accounts for people? And so instead of going through the the app platform or the, the event platform, I go off and I just ping you on, hey, Jim Bob, how you doing um, on LinkedIn and, and send them a, a connection request. I saw your presentation really good, blah, 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 right? That, that, again, that's an individual preference. Um, but again, sometimes some of the platforms over promise and, and under deliver in terms of some of the capabilities around chat. Some of them also have built in uh, video capabilities and some of them do it very well. Now, what I mean by that is, so I'm here attending an event and I'm on a browser window. And when I want to go into a breakout room or I go in to have a one-on-one -on -one chat at a, at a virtual booth or with a person, I simply have to click one button on the app window and obviously the browser will ask for access to my camera and my microphone. I go, yes, and I'm in. I don't have to spin up Zoom or open Skype or open some other tool and spend a half an hour trying to get everything working. Um, so those of them that have the built-in one-click video capabilities, that, that makes networking um, a lot easier. Now, virtual booth capabilities. Now, these have evolved quite a lot. Um, and I'll come back to that with the company thing later on. But quite a few different companies are, sorry, event platforms now allow you to have a virtual booth. 
And obviously that's kind of where you have a, a presence for your branding, your assets. Some of them have 3D models where you can kind of walk around inside in the booth. Um, as I say, some of them are looking at uh, the 3D kind of models, live video, live chats, even VR. Um, and, and that's kind of getting quite interesting. But sometimes it's a bit, you know, I'll be honest, it's a bit more trouble to, to kind of get into it. It's a bit gimmicky, but I'll come back to that later. One of the biggest frustrations I have with a lot of virtual events, and I've probably been at you know, 30 or 40 in the past number of months, some people take a, um, a lot of time and effort to make them look nice. And what I mean by that is I was on the Eon um, Innovation Days the last couple of days in and out. Z Prime had their ETS 2020. And what I mean by this is that they're using backgrounds. They're using picture in picture. They're, they have the panel name on the screen. They have names under all the speakers. As an attendee experience, it's I find that better than simply having a black window with four heads, talking heads, no names, no idea what the session is about, don't know who they are. I, I find that harder to do. So again, it's, it's about putting some time and effort into, if you like, the presentation. And it's like every one of us in the energy industry or any industry you want to think about, if you go to an event, it's all about the presentation and the boot layout. and It looks nice and the graphics and the whatever. You have to treat online events the same way. Um, and as I say, these are just examples of what I, you know, what I think is kind of good ways of doing it. There's plenty of ones out there that um, wouldn't be as nice, let's say. As an attendee, you have to have a plan. And what I mean by a plan is that if we're off to a physical event, you will have planned your travel there. You'll probably have looked at the schedule and go, oh, I need to meet them and I need to go here and I want to see that and I'll meet up with these people and whatever. You need a plan. If you're spending half a day, a full day, or two half days at a virtual event, you need to have a plan. And I'll be honest, the amount of people that I've met at virtual events and they're kind of, well, I'm just dropping in to see this because I'm, I'm doing my normal day job. And, and I, I find that, a, you hear about me, I'll, I'll chat about that later. I don't think that's a good idea. You also need to define your goals. Again, I used to run sales teams and whatever, we'd be off to events and we'd have goals for everybody in terms of number of new contacts, uh, new leads, new stuff we wanted to learn, people we wanted to meet and whatever. If you're going to a, a, a virtual event, you should have your own goals. How many new contacts do I need? How many more leads? What new things am I going to learn? Um, treat it like a proper event. And block out your time. When we're all off at in-person events, I'd send people emails and I'd say, oh, I'm out of office, I'm off at European Utility Week, or I'm off at you know, Inlet, I'm off at Distributed, I'm off wherever. I meet people at virtual events all the time. If I send them an email, there's no out of office. So you're trying to do both jobs, your office job, and then you're off at an event. And then some people say, oh, the event experience wasn't the same. It, of course it wasn't. You're not treating it like a proper event. So again, just plan your time. Obviously, you know, okay, someone like me, I have a, a pretty comfortable setup, right? This is, this is my job. Not everybody will have a setup like this or in their home or their apartment. You know, you may be simply sitting in, at the kitchen table, in the attic, in the, the cellar, wherever. But do have a, a, a comfortable setup, even if it's just simply, a, a, you know, whatever. Be comfortable. You could be sitting there for four or five hours, right? So be comfortable. And the one thing I would, I would say is the amount of people that go to different events, and if you've, you, they're all different platforms, they all have different capabilities, and you have to kind of learn how to use the platform, right? So, you know, how do I get networking? How do I, and again, you have to invest some time, right? So you have to spend 10, 15 minutes kind of clicking on things and seeing how it works. And now, okay, that's how I get to contact him and whatever. But put that time up, you know, in, log on to the system maybe day, a couple of days before, play around, see how it works. That's how you get your, your kind of return of investment. The other thing is a lot of people say to me, oh, well, it's not the same for networking. And the first question I ask them is, right, say, in the event platform, have you completed your, your profile? Did you put in your picture, your bio, your company site, your LinkedIn profile, if you have Twitter, whatever? And I go, uh, no. And I'm like, and then you're complaining that people aren't engaging with you. Interesting, right? So again, it's, it's kind of, maybe it's extra work, but if, you're, if you were flying off to a physical event, you'd put in that work. So put in the work. 
The other thing I would say is try and test everything. Most events now, if it's a couple of day event, they will send you out the login details days in advance. Click on stuff, log in, check that everything works. Does my camera work with this app? I'm not getting any hardware issue saying cannot connect to your camera. The other thing I've seen is at a, a large event about four weeks ago in the US, one large utility, none of their staff could connect because there was a VPN issue. Whatever port the particular platform was using, it was blocked by the firewall at that utility. Nobody could get in or out, right? So again, you'd want to find those out a couple of days before rather than at five past nine when the thing started at nine o'clock. And it's kind of back to the be engaged, be there. You know, book your time. If you are online at an event, even if you're just sitting there kind of going, God, this is really boring. But go networking, click around, whatever. If you open up your email or you go off doing your own normal day job and go back to your um, team calls and whatever, yeah, it, it won't be a great event experience because, you know, there's too much stuff going on. Um, and the, the best thing as well, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, I'd like to do more on social media. But now if you're sitting down on your desk with your laptop or whatever, well, you're able to, you know, engage with other people, post out links, tweets, agree with people, whatever. And that's all part of the networking, right? Or like someone's post or connect with them or whatever. And follow the hashtag. And what I've done with a couple of folks and people have done with me, you know, when I go off to an event, I want to meet up with certain people. And a lot of it is kind of ad hoc. You'll meet them at five o'clock in the evening and you go, what are you doing for dinner? Or I'll meet up later on tonight and we'll um, go off and have a beer or a glass of wine or a glass of water, or whatever. I've seen people just set up their own ad hoc. Come here at eight o'clock tonight. Let's just meet up for a cup of coffee. Uh, I just want to have a chat outside of the event platform. And again, it's all part of the networking and whatever. You don't have to not, um, whatever. If the event organizer isn't organizing it, go off and do it yourself. Um, and it, yeah, it's not the same as wandering off down in the city with your colleagues and friends and having a chat, but hey, it is what it is. Technology is not the, it's not brilliant, but it's not the inhibitor here. I just need to make a bit more effort. Right. Now, supposing as an attendee, um, this is an example of the feed loop platform. Now, those of you that know me, I was off and I, I had the opportunity to host the Charge 2020 conference from uh, Frederick and his team up in Iceland. But this is just a snapshot of a, an event platform. So you've got the main stage and the lobby and the sessions and the networking and the account where you set up your profile and you've got all the different sessions and whatever. And every event I have been to over the past six months, they all look different. They might use the same wording, but the way they do networking is different. The way you set up your account is different. And this is kind of back to the thing that if you're going to spend the time and effort at an event, have a quick look at the platform, find your way around. There'd probably be some help videos and whatever. It's well worth putting in the time and effort because to be honest, knowing your way around and how to get around and see the sessions and whatever, um, otherwise you just give up and ah, it was a crap event. Um, may not have been a bad event, but it was just the experience was poor. But at the same time, that's not all down to the event organizers. I do think we all have a, we all need to, what would you say, um, take some responsibility to kind of try out some of the stuff ourselves. Now, if you're a speaker, I've had the opportunity to be a speaker on multiple different uh, events over the past whatever months. And again, as a speaker, all of the different platforms will have different tricks for things like sharing your screen. And personally, when I'm moderating sessions and a speaker turns up and then they're trying to figure out how to put a PowerPoint slide on full screen because they haven't done it on that platform before and it's live, that can be a bit frustrating, let's say, right? And it happens. And it happens to everybody. It happened to me, whatever, because, oh, I haven't seen this platform before or whatever. So know what works and know what doesn't. As I say, test everything. And this is back to Isabel's... Um, um, what would you call it, comment earlier. You don't want to find out that there's a surprise that, oh, you have to download Zoom. A number of companies don't allow Zoom to be installed on their corporate clients. Um, there might be VPN issues. Again, it's rare, but if you're putting that much time and effort into a, 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 an event platform, just make sure that um, you try and test everything. You know, be, in some ways, you'd be a bit paranoid. 
If you're a speaker, I certainly recommend folks, if you can, to have a second PC or a, a tablet, a, an iPad or a, some sort of a tablet or a phone or whatever. Because if you want to kind of follow the conference and also be a speaker at the same time, it's kind of hard to do it on the same PC unless you have a pretty nice setup. And what I mean by that is you're either going to get feedback from listening to the session and feeding back into your mic, or you're not going to be able to watch what the previous speaker was saying because you're in the green room somewhere. So that's why I have kind of two PCs. And again, I, this isn't your average setup, but you can do this, whatever, with a phone and a laptop. So listen to the event on the laptop with, say, a Bluetooth headset. You can take it out and whatever. So I would encourage you to, to, to have that kind of um, a setup if you're a speaker. And if you're showing a video, again, the amount of speakers that have said, oh, I'll, I'll show the video from here. And I, if, if it's in my power, I'll go, no, can you upload the video the days before? I'll play it from here or we'll play it from the event platform. Because, again, depending on bandwidth, depending on the power of that person's PC, when they play a video on their laptop, what the rest of us see out in the big world could be very different. And the experience mightn't be the same. Um, and it gives a bad impression. The other particular gripe I would have is a lot of folks are, um, what would you say? A lot of folks are using virtual uh, backgrounds and they're, they're brilliant for, you know, if you're in an area where the family's behind you or whatever, you just want to block out the, your bookshelf, whatever. A virtual screen, a virtual backgrounds are a great invention. And most of the, the conferencing tools have them right now. But the one thing I would, I would, suggest is check that your PC or your Mac has enough horsepower and graphics capability to do it well. And what I mean by well is that when you're in the virtual background, when you're moving around, you don't look like some cartoon character out of an 80s Atari video game where it's very pixely and it's thing. All of these virtual backgrounds stuff work really well, but they do need some horsepower. So you need a good laptop and a good graphics card to, to do all that in real time. So watch for that. Because again, it's kind of your, it's your brand, it's your image. Um, if you're on a panel, I again, you might say, well, no, of course, everyone does this. Well, you'd be surprised they don't. I've been on panels moderating it where I'll ask a question to someone and say, well, did you hear um, Anne's uh, presentation? Any comments for Anne? And they're kind of looking at me foolishly going, uh, I didn't actually watch the panel. Um, and you're kind of going, OK, that's great. Um, now what do we talk about? Um, so seriously, it, again, if you were at a physical event and you were a panelist, you would have sat in the front row and listened to everybody. Online, do the same. And turn up in plenty of time. Uh, most event organizers right now are setting up things like green rooms. So they say, well, your session's on at 11 o'clock. Please come online 15, 30 minutes beforehand. Go to this link. We'll test out all your sound and your camera and whatever. You'll be in the green room. You'll meet the moderator there for a couple of minutes, and then we'll put you live at 11. I still see people, and, and I know I, I've done it myself and whatever, you know, we're busy, there's things going on and whatever, but they turn up one minute before they go live and then the mic isn't working or they're muted or something isn't right. The lighting behind them is poor or whatever, um, you know, to try and make time. And plus all the stuff for an attendee, your profile and, you know, be engaged and, and, and. Now, again, you might think some of these things are kind of, well, these are obvious, after the last six months, I, I, as I say, I, I, I've come across a lot of examples. And whether you agree or disagree or think it's all whatever foolish, hey, let me know. Now, the other thing about being a speaker, it's not just simply being a talking head and sharing my slides. You can do clever things. And what I mean by clever things is you can, on a decent laptop, have some software that allows you to do things like I'm doing here with um, uh, changing around the cameras. So now I'm on the system here. I'm using uh, different software to click on different things, and I can change in real time the layout. That makes it a bit more engaging. Now, what Rune Kurt and the team did at Charge was quite interesting. So Rune was doing a presentation, and what he had was not just him in a room. He had his camera in the room and his laptop, but he had his team, some of his team around him. And I'll come back to this in a minute. So more people are kind of doing their 
joining an event as a group and then they can have a discussion in real time. So instead of just watching one person or two people at different places, you're watching people in a room have a conversation. And they drove one of the best interactive sessions I've seen where they were asking people through the event platform, okay, here is a particular scenario around smart cities. What do you think the challenge with this is? So they'd give out the things. And people in the chat would type in their what the challenges are. They'd then ask them what are the opportunities. People would type in the opportunities. Rune and his team were cutting and pasting out of the chat and putting it into Miro, which is a, a whiteboard online um, uh, uh, post-it system. So you could see the post-it notes being added with everyone's comments. It was very well done, right? So Miro, um, there's lots of other ones out there, whatever. But think about the way you can create more interactivity. It just doesn't have to be kind of the talking head looking at the camera. Um, and you need to practice with these things, but that was one of the best ones. Now, one feature, because I do, um, believe it or not, one of the kind of say, new work I've picked up over the past six months is I facilitate team calls, strategy calls, and whatever, internally for companies. So if you are going to use some of these tools, let's say, for a particular company, you need to check in case any of the, if they're brainstorming on their next new um, product strategy, they might not want that going to a third party cloud provided tool, right? It needs to stay within the firewall. Um, so that, 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 just watch for that. But for events and things like this, there's a lot of ways to make things interactive. Most companies will have, you know, if they're off to a big event or a small event, somebody will be assigned to create a plan. There'll be the whole marketing plan. There'll be the layout of the booth, the graphics, the assets, and whatever. If you're off to a virtual event for two days, one day, even half a day, your company should have a plan. And again, the amount of companies I chat to and they say, oh, we're going here. And I go, okay, can, can you share the, the plan? I will not, well, no, uh, we're just, he's going, he's going, she's going, and they're going. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you need a plan. Um, if you want to get something out of it, have a proper plan. And define your own employee goals. You know, you have to be on there for X amount of time. I want you to get leads. Whatever. It's the exact same as going to a, a normal event. But you have to allow the employees as well the time to go to the event. If you're sending them to an event and they're sitting, sitting at home for eight hours a day looking at, at an event, don't expect them to be filling out spreadsheets and presentations and doing all the rest of the stuff at the same time, right? That you're, that's defeating the point. I'd also, and it's kind of back to Isabel's point earlier, whatever event you're going to and whoever's on point for your company's participation, they should be or they should have someone on their team who, who gets to know the tool very well. What are the capabilities of the virtual booth? Can we do live chat? If we're doing live chat, do we have to use Zoom? Is Zoom allowed in our company and whatever? So you have to, for, for your company experience to come across, you do need to understand what works and what doesn't. And you can ask the event organizers and you can ask the event company, the platform. But as I say, you really not gotta, you gotta play around with it because the devil's in the detail. And the other thing I've seen, you know, obviously we, we still are not allowed to travel around. But what we are seeing is people are saying, well, you can come into the office in Munich or you can come into the office in, in Den Haag or you can go to the office in London or wherever. So, Maybe you want to say, when we're attending this event, let's, again, social distancing um, rules and regulations being followed. Maybe we'll all watch it from the same conference room. And when we're attending and one of the breakout sessions or whatever, we'll have one camera in the room where there is a team. It also changes the dynamic around the way you do presentations because you could be chatting to somebody one-to-one -one in standing at a wall with the camera just on a tripod. So that whole concept about not everybody may be sitting in their own home. Um, if that's allowable, then you can start looking at that. And the other thing is, you know, it's all about branding and we want to have a good impression so that when the CEO drops by the virtual boot, he's kind of impressed. I have come across a bunch of companies where they have lots of assets, but they don't work very well in a virtual booth. The video is too complicated or their, their assets are too too busy, um, the posters and whatever. So again, it's kind of back to the booth layout and the, the, the capabilities of the platform, but you want your, you want your a company to look well.
So watch what kind of visual assets you have and what you need for the future. You know, we're used to putting up the big, you know, massive banners at events. Now you're looking at different banner sizes. And granted, it's only creating a new font and 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 and. But you need to plan for that. It can't happen the night before. And the one thing I would say is come up with something different. I'll give a couple of examples now in a few minutes. And this depends on your budget, but it doesn't necessarily depend on your budget. And what I mean by come up with something different, um, it was at Z Prime event, ETS 20, whatever, a couple of weeks back. They had yoga classes. They had a session where one of their team had gone off uh, mountain biking in the Colorado mountains. And basically, I sat at 11 o'clock at night, I sat for 20 minutes watching a a replay from a helmet cam of someone biking. Why? It was different. They also had a cooking class. They sent out the um, ingredients to everybody weeks before, and you could whatever, and then you could cook along in the kitchen because it was lunchtime US time. That's different. Now, is it perfect? No, but what I'm saying is you do really need to um, think differently. People are looking for experiences, right? So. There's only so much you know, death by webinar you can take. So give them something different. And the last thing is I, I've, I've had some interesting conversations with companies where they're saying, oh, they need, you know, we need to look good and we need to, to do all this. And then I'm kind of going, okay, um, but everybody on this call is using a laptop with the built-in camera and it's not a great angle. You haven't bought, have you bought them web cameras? Have you given them a headset? Have they got a decent PC so they can run? And then the question is, uh, I'm not sure. And I'm kind of going, well, if you want your people to look good, give them the tools to make them look good. Um, and seriously, and I know budgets are tight and you know, the economy isn't going great. But seriously, if, if for, a, for an investment in some of the tools, it, it really helps. And it, it stops some of the frustration with people. So a couple of examples. Now, as I say, this is not for everybody, but I came across this with Siemens Mobility way back in June. They actually filmed this at a, an outside studio, a crowd called um, HL Studios in, in Germany. Think giant um, green screen. And they recorded all of the presentations there. Some of them they did live. And then the guys here, you know, an entire production group. This is, ex I'm not sure how expensive, but, you know, whatever. This is a good setup. Uh, third party cinema production teams, whatever. And then when the people were speaking, they were in a virtual reality world, real people, but the world around them was a, a, a train station with trains coming in and out and then all sorts. And um, Eon did something similar for the last couple of days. Um, so again, this is where maybe if you're looking to plan events, maybe some of your senior staff, they're on the same location, find out if there's a studio. Some companies are building their own, right? Because they'll have the resources or the capabilities. Um, but then look at what Rune and the team did um, where they just had a conference room and they were just, they were amongst themselves, right? So again, you, it's not all mega expensive and green screens and, oh, I need uh, video producers and, and, and. There's some clever ways of doing things. And um, the last one here, this is a shout out to Core Power. I was off at the North American Energy Storage Conference. And I had never come across Core Power. They're a, a, a lithium ion energy storage provider in the US. They've, they've just expanded into Europe. But what they were doing was they had a virtual booth at the event. And the event platform was good, but it wasn't, let's say, the, 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 it wasn't the best I've seen. But what they did was every morning on LinkedIn, they posted a a virtual booth schedule. So they said that their CEO was there at nine o'clock for a quick session, at 12, their uh, whatever, the VP of sales, whatever. They had a booth, a booth plan, the exact same as most companies would have at a real event. So when I go to the sessions would be running, I'd go over to the virtual exhibition hall, I'd click on the booth, I'd go at nine o'clock and I'd hear their CEO. And then I could have a chat with them. Simple, very clever. One of the few companies I've seen doing this right now whether it's twitter email whatever your sales guys can then send people to go meet the ceo they also had a virtual happy hour each evening where they had a bunch of them on camera um they had a camera in one of their conference rooms so you kind of saw half the team the guys and girls that, that make all the stuff in the factory it was different um you know does it replace the the face-to-face -face happy hour 
Probably not. But again, there are you don't have to spend a lot of money and you can do a lot of the things you would have done in the real world at virtual events. But you have to put in some effort and think differently. Because to be quite honest, let's face it, we're all trying to stand out and know why would you go to his session rather than her session or this event or that event. And how do I get leads? Uh, how do I engage with people? My own personal takeaway from virtual events. And it's the same in the real world. Our most valuable resource is our time. And it's up to each, each of us to use it wisely. So you have to have a plan. And I suppose, again, it's kind of back to my rant from the start. If you're off at a virtual event, and it's a, a, a what I would call a, a normal event for half a day, full day, a couple of days, treat it like a proper event. Do the exact same kind of things in terms of your goals, planning your time, who am I going to meet, what am I going to see, and almost put out your out of office, as in I am not available for my normal day job for the next two days because I'm at this event. That's where my focus needs to be. You know, it, you'd say, yeah, but it's hard and I'm working from home and the kids and I understand all that and that is that is challenging, right? But at the same time, I'm just kind of going that, Virtual events are kind of the way to the way it's going to be for the let's say certainly the next three six months. Many of the companies I work with, you know, they're looking at June next year before they start planning any travel. Um, even some of the stuff locally are going back to offices. So they were my tips and tricks. You may or may not agree with many of them. Now, as I say, it doesn't replace the the real event, but we got to make the most of it. Um, and a lot of folks are trying to become very clever with ways of driving engagement. And to be quite honest, let's, you know, if you go to a, a physical event, regardless of how much money people spend on their boots and their presentations and the keynotes and, 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 you'll always come away with some things that kind of catch your attention because it was different. Virtual events are pretty much the same.